Here I'm going to show you how we did the grid for the table that I'm making for my hot wire foam cutter. I made this template here in AutoCAD. All this is is one half of my interlocking grid. So you'll have a bunch of them like this and a bunch of them like this. I went ahead and stacked up 16 of these things so make sure I had enough and then clamped them together, ran them through my scroll saw to cut out each of these notches. When you're done, you get something that looks like this. Okay, so I've made marks across the top and bottom edges of the bottom half of my uh, table here. What I'm going to do then is set this on top and line up these marks to make sure that everything is centered on three inch centers. Then I'm going to take this piece right here, sandwich it right on top, and then weigh it down with a bunch of books. So I've got my table all glued up here. You can see it here on edge. I'll explain these in a second. These are my supports. In here I've got my honeycomb between two layers of 18 inch on a side cardboard. This support mechanism allows me to slide this in and out basically for just storage. It doesn't actually allow you to adjust anything because the hole for the wire is going to pass straight through the center of the table. So these legs right here are hollow because it allows me to put weights in the front of this so that when this is sitting on this base back here like this, I can put some scuba weights or something in these compartments here and that will in effect hold the table in place because I don't have any way to suction cup it or anything like that or definitely can't screw it to my glass table. So anyway, when we flip it back over, these here are my outer guides which also form one half of this leg. This one here is my inner guide and what happens is it sits on this support right here. So this is my table base. I don't know if you can see it but I've marked an X right here and that marks the spot of course. That's where my pivot pin is going to be located for my big C frame back there. On the back side of this I've got a grid here to help keep everything rigid. All these pieces that are critical are two layers thick. I've built this section up here with an additional five layers that I just cut out and then put at 90 degrees in alternate layers and then I've filled that hole in because I really want something thick for when my pivot pin goes through there because two layers is not sufficient to hold the, the C-frame in place. These here keep everything squared up and what it does, you can probably see the slots there here and over here are going to fit right on these rails. Just like so. Imagine the C-frame back here and then this allows me to slide it all the way back until it touches the C-frame which should be about there. I can slide it all the way back to there for storage and then for use I'll pull it out to about there. That'll give me I think it's 20 inches is what I said, 18 or 20 inches of throat cutting depth. So that'll be really, really great. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now is trim these pieces that I just cut and then I'm going to install them here on the edge to give me a nice clean edge. Okay, I've got two of my pieces cut here. I'm doing the front and the back first. The reason for that is I want the front piece to be one solid piece. I don't want to see the side piece really poking through like that. So I want to make sure that the front piece overlaps both side pieces. So now I'll go ahead and run glue inside my table here. Got to be quick with this one because it's going to want to drip. Alright, that looks pretty good. Nice and smooth, much better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and we'll do the back side. And then I'm going to cut the side pieces to fit inside these and glue those up. So I'll be back once those are done.